This is a quick little farming scene that I made up and really didn't take so long to sketch, probably about five minutes, two to five minutes. The thing I really wanted to do was get in some soft mountains in the background, so I'll show you how to use some wet on wet techniques in order to get these nice uh, mountains that sort of blend in to the sky. You've got some soft edges, maybe have some hard edges in some areas as well. Give that a go. Um, we've got some houses here that I'm just going to leave white. I'm thinking the light source coming from above so that we've got some shadows cast underneath this tree, maybe um, under these bushes and houses here. And we've just got some little bushes, little houses in the background. And as we move towards the front, there's um, they're just getting a bit larger. So let's give this a shot. And really what I want to do first is begin with the sky. So... I want to get in a nice kind of um, a bluish sort of sky. So what I'm going to do is just uh, pick up a teeny bit of cerulean blue and also just add in some of this gray in there as well. So I've actually got just a bit of neutral tint left on the, on the um, palette. So I'm going to pop that in like that and um, really go in quite loosely. I'm thinking maybe we we'll leave some bits of white showing in the sky as well and um, get some darker areas of clouds just blending in with the blue. So um, let's just have a try with that. I'm using a school mop brush and some Balhong paper. I talked about this in one of my previous videos and it's a great little pad that I picked up, great little block that I picked up the other day and surprised at how uh, well it actually performs. I wasn't sure what to expect, um, but really I don't see too much difference from other kind of watercolour papers that I've used. So what we want to do is as we get down to around here, notice I'm skipping the paper in some areas as well. So. Make sure you do that, that's just going to get that sky looking a bit more interesting and you know, you can drop in some darker bits of paint into the sky to mix up a bit of that. Um, dropping in bits of paint here in the sky and I'm really being careful not to um, get it too dark as well. So I'm just going to go grab some of this grey paint and just bring it down the page to where these mountains are. So I'm going to go around here and let's just drop in some paint. It's really soaking up the water quite a lot. And um, in some areas I'm going to leave it dry and some I'm just going to go over it like that. So I think we'll have some soft mountains here. And just checking out the sky again to see if there's anything that I want to do, maybe want to add in or remove while I can. And I'm thinking it could do with just a bit more uh, stronger color here on this side. So you know, while the paint is still wet, it's a really good idea to start and playing around and adding in clouds and darker shapes while you can because once it's dried it's going to be really hard to influence things so um, just drop in a few little bits and pieces like that I think we'll keep that for now I don't want to start overworking it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a smaller brush this is a calligraphy brush I've had this for years and still keeping its point which is fantastic and I'm going to pick up some cobalt blue um, actually change my mind I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and mix a tiny bit of red in there so you want to get this pretty thick um, pretty thick almost like a, a coffee like consistency because what we're going to do is drop this in to the background so just having a look let's try it here okay that's probably not strong enough I'm just gonna 
pick up a teeny bit more and add some some more red in there as well and um, to get this kind of purplish sort of color and let's give that a try so we've got a bit of mountain coming in from that side to the left um, goes up to here and just be careful with the um, the houses as well so that you don't uh, go color in their roofs so there we go just dropping in some paint and um, being pretty uh, loose with those brush strokes you notice some areas we've got some uh, wet on wet going on and in some other areas it's around here for, for instance it's wet or dry so leave that and you know as you go over the paper as well you might just get some of these white uh, bits forming and just leave that don't um, don't destroy it that's going to make the painting look a little bit more interesting indicating some shapes and um, highlights and things there so that's looking pretty good I am now going to pick up some green so a little bit of this uh, sap green that I've got and just start working my way down the page essentially so I want to join that on to bits of the purple um, blue bluish purple whatever it is and you know we've also got these little houses here uh, whatever they are but we can leave tiny bits of white in these areas just to indicate I mean I've covered over a fair bit of it already but you know we can add another one there for instance you know just little indications and um, go over the top like that there and uh, we can just maybe get another one here you can barely tell to be honest but I'm having this mix nicely into this green and um, really helps to have that page on a slight uh, slant as well so just going around and I'm now cutting over these roofs very important to leave these white get those highlights in uh, later um, so just going around like that yeah I want to dull that green down a bit with some of that, that gray and just carry this wash down the page um, and again if you've got areas where the paper just skips it be so tiny bits of this white in there indicates more detail than is actually there and um, you don't want to get rid of all of it so just going around this house now and leaving bits of white and we can actually go in later and we're going to do the houses a bit later but the main thing is we just want to leave the uh, the, the highlights so and yeah, leaving the bottom of the houses which we're going to paint darker anyway so just go around them like that and carry this wash down the page and um, let's have a look I'm also just going to pick up a little bit of water and just uh, flick it into the back maybe here to um, get a little bit of variation um, there just mop up a tiny bit that's gone into the sky I don't want it to go too high up in here um, but little bits and pieces going in there that's fine and more of the sap green like that here and um, moving this down towards the foreground you can even add in a bit of yellow ochre as well to the mix but mainly i'm using sap green and a little bit of uh, this blue kind of mix as well and we've got this tree here and it's kind of hard to see now okay so just move this wash down the page and some of this stuff we can turn into rocks and things like that as well some of these little white spots okay so 
keeping that quite uh, wet here. Um, yeah, let's drop in some little bits of dark paint like that. Let it run down the page like this. Do its thing. And as we get down to the bottom, what I want to do is just add a tiny bit more yellow. Just a bit more yellow through here. Down the bottom. I might use a little spray bottle actually to try to get some um, blending going on with this top layer here and uh, the bottom layer so chuck in a bit of green in there as well like that and if we put in a bit of blue oops a tiny bit of tiny bit of blue running through here like that okay and I just grab my spray bottle left it in here underneath should have had it out before just got a little spray bottle it's not even a, it's an empty perfume bottle actually which I just used to store a teeny bit of water and I'm just going to try sp just spray it through here a bit and, and see if we can get some some interesting blending effects occurring like that um, like this let it all kind of join onto the bottom of the page and um, do its thing and now we can add in a bit more of this color as well but honestly I, I try not to mess around with this all too much and let it mix and um, interested to see what will happen So that's really the first wash and I'm going to wait for this all to dry off and what I'll do as well is I'm going to get the tissue and just mop up this bottom bit here because obviously all the wash has run down to this section there's a lot of water collected at the bottom. Okay so this is all dried off quite nicely now and what I want to do and I'm just mainly using round brushes for this entire painting, I've got a little synthetic round brush, I've still got this uh calligraphy brush here we're going to be able to just get in some trees and smaller indications especially in the background um, with this smaller round brush and it's just a cheap uh synthetic round brush that i've had for quite some time but you know it holds a good point i've got tons of these ones but um for objects where you don't need too much paint for these are great so you can actually get uh, you know a sharp shape um, but as long as you're not covering a large area you're fine in fact I like to dry off this brush a little bit and um, just get it a little bit kind of mangled on top so then when I go in maybe if I pop in a tree here for example this needs to be darker so you want to just mix up a, some blue with the sap green um, or if you've got some uh, emerald green anything like that it's gonna work fine and you know just drop little bits into the background like that just indicating some the trees and you know rather than drawing one tree as well you can sometimes just do large shapes um, like that clumps of trees and uh, remember just keep these as small as you can at the back and um, you know there are bits of white and things going on in there so just leave them um, leave them be but we just want to indicate some small trees especially going around the houses there's a little house here there so you know just um getting in some shapes and with the round brush it's easy because it already looks like a tree as as soon as you you touch the paper um so I, often try to choose a brush that looks like the particular object that I'm painting and just makes it a lot easier for myself. Um, 
So I'm going to just bring in some little shapes and things uh, to the foreground and thinking how exactly I'm going to do this as well. There's um, other trees over this side too, um, which are quite a bit um, more around the same darkness, to be honest, but they're going around the house. So I just want to be careful with that. There, so just indicating a bit of a uh, some trees running behind like that, and uh, maybe another one here. So as they come forward, you just want to make them a bit bigger, and um, I'm going to just sort of use them as well to form a kind of uh, path, I suppose. Yeah, and these these can be bushes or anything. To be honest with you. Um, you know, they're more kind of bushes over here, whereas these ones over here look more like trees, especially the ones in the background there. So we can pop in a few of those trees near the houses, especially next to the white area. That's going to contrast and make them pop out a bit more, especially if we have them right next to them, like that. Try not to be too neat with them as well. I'm getting, sometimes you just get a bit precious with how uh, their shapes look and where you're going to place them, but um, yeah, if, if you if you're too specific with um, placing them and getting the shape right, it then starts looking uh, a bit robotic. So you just want to be careful with that. And um, what I'm doing here is just getting some tiny, smaller little trees in the background. I know it doesn't look like much, but I'm hoping this will kind of add to the overall picture and at the same time i don't want to get rid of these lovely mountains in the background too so just being careful with that okay so um we're going to go in and just get in a few more tr tr shrubs and trees here in the foreground uh, we'll get in another one here and here let's get in a little branch when we get closer to the front um, it just makes sense to put a teeny bit more detail into what's uh, what's going on. And notice that I'm trying to just imply these kind of undulations uh, in the land. So it's kind of, it's going up and then traveling downwards like this, uh, just to help lead the, the eye into the painting. I think this is helping. And I can mix in some other paints in here. I know I've used a lot of green, but I, here we've got a bit of brown. So we can chuck in a bit of brown as well and just imply some branches and things like that coming off um, some of these trees slash shrubs. And, you know, we've actually got a, a large tree here, which I want to indicate, but also I'm weary to just um, make it loose enough so that it doesn't stick out and look um, out of place in the painting. So let me just get a bit of this green and we'll drop just something like that um, quite loosely into the um, trees, uh, the leaves, right? Like that. And just get some kind of loose leaf shapes in the sky. Um, not too much because I don't again I don't want to get rid of this lovely mountain in the background so um, I'll leave that for now and then start just adding in some darker branches in brown up here and uh, let's see how we can kind of shape this off as well I did I just want it to look a bit more uh, more randomized and, and a bit more messy as well I guess like that I might actually have another tree that cuts in front of it from the side a larger tree okay so that's looking all right um, let's add in a few more shrubs and things like that we can use things on the ground make it kind of look like rocks for instance, I think um, little branches and uh, that kind of thing, like that. 
and just make it a tiny bit darker with brush, uh, dry brush running through the seam and a um, tiny bit of dry brush. And this is again just to keep, um, try to imply a bit of uh, undulations in the land. So, so I want this to kind of lead the viewer in and maybe kind of cut across here too. And then we've got some, um, got some other kind of shrubs and things here. So add one in there. And what else have we got? Let's try another one here. Another shrub, um, like that. Leave that be. And, um, a little bit of dry brushing here in the foreground. Like that. There. Just have some textures and uh, things going on. Maybe some indications of grass here as well. Just some. Uh, bits and pieces like that indicating yeah, just a little path or something coming through so just having a bit of a bit of fun here okay these houses are starting to uh, look a bit out of place because they're so white and um, what I'm gonna do is just get in a bit of color in them so picking up some neutral tint and let's have a look just a tiny bit of neutral tint and I'll get a bit of red in them as well uh, maybe a bit of burnt sienna burnt sienna and neutral tint and just want to get in some darkness underneath the area here the roof but I want to leave a little bit of white that. Here we go, and carry that through um, this side as well. I'll just get in, get the whole thing in. That darken that down there, and we'll get it to sort of touch the ground like that. And um, importantly, where it hits the ground, we need to just and um, mark a bit of a shadow there as well. I'm trying to get this all done in one go. Like that. There we go. Yeah, I hope, so hopefully when that dries it will look a bit more natural. Um, you know, we've got another one here too. So just getting a little bit of this neutral tint popping it through there and just shaping off this little house. Good. That one's a teeny bit off, but no problem. And we've got this one here as well. Okay. I think that one actually looks the best. I've gone a little bit overboard with that, but we will see how it looks once it dries. While that's happening, um, what I want to do is, uh, I might actually just glaze, uh, which is not glaze, but just add a little bit of yellow to the roofs of these houses too. Just a very thin wash of yellow ochre like that. Um, it won't blend, it's no big deal. Some over here, which I won't really bother with too much. Um, and we can start now working on little details. We can get in some uh, little posts. Um, so here, for example, just get in a few little little ones like that, um, fence post there, if it was 
just dry brushed in, I think it would look better. Just less, less water on the brush like that. Add in a few there. Um, I think there's a couple here. Add some little ones in the distance. Just pop in a few like that. Bit of a shadow underneath them as well. And just a bit, of, bit more darkness under the areas of the roof there. We'll just define that one a bit more in here. Okay, and we can even put in a little door or something, um, little indications of more detail like that. Um, again, we'll mark off the bottom here, indicate a bit of a shadow. And, um, you know, that might actually do the trick Okay, so we can get in some more of these little posts and things. I mean, it's not completely necessary, but we can get in some larger ones here in the foreground, for instance, and making this one quite dark, uh, just to indicate it is in the foreground, like that. Um, but I don't want to kind of use this to dominate the entire painting, so be very careful with this. Um, thinking that one might be a bit dark, but we'll just leave it how it is. And I'm just using some sepia here. If you don't have sepia, use any kind of brown, bit of burnt umber is fine too. And you can just um, detail a teeny bit more, pop in a shadow here underneath the fence as well, like that. This just serves to um, create a bit more depth in the painting. And you've got some objects that are just a bit closer and also help to lead the viewer into the painting. So we have one here, for example, like that. But again, not too dark and dry brushed on so that it's not too obvious and taking away from other um, areas of the painting really important so just join that one up let's have a look is that too much nope okay a bit of a shadow underneath like that um, I think another one there maybe one here This tree, I just want to create a shadow underneath as well. Just a very basic shadow. That. Probably a bit more detail onto the limbs of the tree too. That. We don't overdo it. That. And, you know, you can even use a fan brush, my little trick to get in tiny strands of grass and stuff like that quickly. So I'm just picking up a bit of this paint, a bit of this green paint there, pretty thick, dry off the fan brush and um, there we go, just uh, drop in some little indications like that. Maybe 
especially with the nearest tree underneath. Keeping the foreground. Okay. Just looking good. Just add in some birds in the sky. Um, some neutral tint. Some greyish colour. And we'll just pop some in like this. The way I put them in, I just look for areas in the sky where the, you know you can find a highlight, for instance, or um, like that, where you've got a little bit of white left on the page, or you've got just a bit of paint that you've accidentally dripped on, turn it into into a bird, um, like that. Try to keep them uh, pretty varied as well. Okay. Some of them flying closer to each other in groups. And there's some really small ones near the mountains. Just need to touch onto the paper like that. That's all you need. Mixing up some brown, a bit of sepia, and a bit of neutral tint to get a pretty dark colour. Um, and then I'm just going to dry brush this, uh, we'll try to dry brush this on anyway with my uh, calligraphy brush. And just get in some branches heading directly up like this and uh, across the painting. That, and this is kind of cutting over the tree as well. Something like this. There. Coming in from the side and thinking whether we should have it here or not. Um, we can try, we can try. I know we've got the houses and things here as well, so. Uh, I'll see if I can kind of avoid that one and just uh, something like this, just keep the houses there still. I don't want to get rid of them, obliterate them. So, Okay, and I think I'll leave it as that. Check out these tutorials down the side here. I've got a couple of playlists that will help you get some ideas and improve your watercolors.